Okay, today we're going to look at yellow fever and AIDS. Yellow fever is a zoonotic disease because it is transmitted by the mosquito. The South used to have a pretty bad problem with yellow fever because, of course, the uh, South is very warm and very humid, and that's something that the mosquitoes like to breed. Now, if I mention vector, I'm asking you who is transmitting the disease. So in the case of yellow fever, the vector is the mosquito. The type of disease it is, is a zoonotic disease because it is transferred from an animal to a human. However, it is um, called the vector that would be the transmitter. In the case of an airborne disease, I don't really ask for the vector as the air. It's just going to be uh, usually an animal that's transferring the disease. Some of the symptoms with this were nausea, fever. They felt really achy. They got jaundiced again. That means they got yellow. The whites of their eyes turned yellow because there was liver cell destruction. And very often it was fatal. One of the things that was successful in controlling yellow fever is controlling the vector. If you know who the vector is and you can control it, then that is help with the overall uh, control of the disease. So what they did was, is they started spraying a very powerful insecticide that was called DDT. We don't spray that anymore for mosquitoes because it was a powerful genetic mutator but it did control the overall population of the mosquitoes in the south. Now what they spray is called DEET, D-E-E-T, which is another powerful insecticide, but it doesn't have the agent in it that mutates the DNA like DDT did. I wouldn't inhale it. Um, I think they'd say that it's perfectly safe, but uh, now they do spray certain zip codes for the mosquito in the summertime, usually because in that zip code they have found one of these viruses. Right now it's usually West Nile, but back in the day, yellow fever was so widespread in the South that they had regular spraying of the DDT. And people who inhaled a lot of it, it changed their DNA, and of course that was deforming uh, to any of their offspring. So now we don't use that. We use DEET. It is in OFF and some of the other sprays that, that we use for um, mosquitoes. I do think that Mexico and some other countries still use DDT, but it has been outlawed in America. All right, let's talk about AIDS. Now, we have quite a discussion on AIDS. I do have to cut this at 10 minutes. But AIDS is a disease, HIV is the virus. So be very careful on quizzes and tests, which I'm asking for, because you can be HIV positive and actually not have AIDS. AIDS is uh, transmitted through sexual contact, um, contaminated blood products. People who have transfusions could have picked up HIV virus. It stands for human immunodeficiency virus, and AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So they're two completely different things, although everybody uh, to date that has been HIV positive at some point has, con has gotten AIDS. So let's talk about the difference. If a nursing mother is HIV positive, she can also transmit this. It's bodily fluids. It's not supposed to be transmitted uh, through kissing, but it is a considered to be an STD. AIDS came on, HIV showed up, it's an emerging virus uh, because it showed up on the scene, I believe, somewhere between 1982 and 1985. If I ask, just give me 1985. And it was originally transferred through a monkey. So monkeys are primates, you are too, and for that to uh, jump species is just not that big of a deal. 
All right, so um, this causes immune system failure because what it does is it's very specific. The HIV virus is very, very specific for a type of white blood cell called the helper T cell. Helper T cells are the garbage collectors in your system, and they tend to clean up all the bacteria and viruses that move through your lymphatic system. So when you have an infection, your bone marrow starts producing all these helper T cells to escort it out of your out of your body. Well, it can take between eight months and two years for that helper T cell count to start decreasing due to the fact that HIV is just gobbling it up. When you have a normal white blood cell count, it's about 14,000 white blood cells per milliliter of blood. When you get an infection and the doctor takes your blood, that white blood cell count can go as high as 35,000. But over time, it's going to start decreasing because the helper T cells are just losing the battle. Once that white blood count gets down to about 4,000, then you are said to have AIDS. Up until that time, you were just HIV positive. You can't take an antibiotic, as we've talked about before, because antibiotics work to destroy the cell wall, and of course, the viruses don't have cell walls. So you have to take an antiviral. And the one that is so common that HIV positive patients take is called AZT. It stands for azido thymidine and it's very very powerful a lot of people just can't take it it causes vomiting hallucinations in some people they can't walk they get very dizzy some people take it very well some people do not there's probably a whole host of new medications that they give HIV positive patients I'm not an expert on that um, but if I ask AZT and it's an antiviral Antiviral medications slow the reproduction of the virus. It can't replicate as fast as it, nor as it normally does. So anything like Theraflu, Tamiflu that you would take for influenza is an antiviral, and AZT is as well. Typically, people that die are not dying of AIDS so much as they are an immune uh, suppressant disease such as flu or cold. A lot of times they can't fight off those particular uh, viruses because they have got this virus that is attacking all of their um, helper T cells, which normally would help with those other viruses. So a lot of times, you know, their death certificate doesn't say AIDS. It'll say complications of AIDS. And that means that there were complications that attacked their immune system and they really just could not fight. So with HIV, you can be HIV positive, and in a span of time, you are going to end up with a white blood count that is lower than 4,000, and that means at that point you have AIDS. Okay, we'll pick up there with the next two.